Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'm discussing the Avenues, Sale Park. Beginning this farm in Herding Land in the late 1800s, the Highland Park Track was established in 1886 and later annexed by the city of Los Angeles in 1895. It is considered one of Los Angeles' first suburbs. During the early part of the 20th century, Highland Park flourished as a home for artists and intellectuals who led the arts and crafts movement. They built many of the architecturally significant homes and buildings found in the community today. In the 1940s, Anglo families began to flee the neighborhood, leaving it behind for newly minted suburbs in the San Gabriel and San Fernando Valley. Latino families, mostly of Mexican descent, began to move in. By 1960, the Highland Park neighborhood was predominantly Latino. The avenues originated in the early 1940s as a group who established themselves as a social initiative aimed at young Mexican Americans in an effort to protect the young people from street violence and danger posed by other groups. The Flores brothers thought of creating a group that could offer both protection and an alternative. The gang was at first rarely violent and only took part in sporadic assaults. This would change as the years went by. As their numbers increased, they became more violent and started to act more like a criminal street gang and less like a social club. In the late 1960s, when heroin flooded the streets, the avenues took a turn for the worse. The gang considered taking part of such activities and started establishing themselves as a focal point in several local drug rings. This was considered by many the turning point that transformed the former social club into a full-fledged criminal organization. During the 70s and the 80s, the avenues began establishing their notoriety. With the demand for drugs growing each month, the avenues had to adapt in order to remain relevant and to continue profiting from their activities. The large amount of money that the group had been able to stash gave them access to more sophisticated and deadly weapons, which translated into a nice advantage on their opponents. The avenues began to clash with neighboring gangs, such as Highland Park 13, Cypress Park Boys, Tunerville, and Frogtown Reefa in an attempt to assert their dominance. The avenue started in Highland Park, but would later expand to surrounding areas, the most significant of which is Glassell Park. More than 100 years ago, Drew Street, which is located in Glassell Park, was a beautiful green spot. Named by Andrew Glassell after his son, Drew. For most of the 20th century, it was a tucked away suburban enclave, flanked by the Los Angeles River and the Glendale Forest Cemetery. Starting in the 1960s, the city built apartments on its dead-end streets and avenues. Three dozen homes were replaced by hundreds of apartment units, adding 1,500 people to six square blocks. LA city leaders and planners were unprepared when the new apartments filled with poor people from Tel Chapa and surrounding villages. Drew Street, with its long straight rise, offered the perfect viewing base from which to spot approaching cop cars. That turned out to be just the thing for Maria Chata Leon, a young tough woman from a lawless Mexican village who settled there and gave birth to 13 children, 10 of them being boys, with four different men. With a new baby on her hip every year or two, Maria dealt drugs and staked her claim on Drew Street in a bleak house stocked with guns and explosives. Her home was known as the Satellite House because of the satellite TV dish in their driveway. This house, which was ran by Maria and her children, became the headquarters for gang activity and drug trade operations. At first, the avenues used Drew Street to sell drugs, knowing immigrants would stay quiet. By the 90s, the immigrant kids were replacing the traditional cholos as the force on the street, and the avenues Drew Street clique rose. By the late 90s, several of her sons became her power base. Six of her sons formed the gang nucleus. They were joined by cousins and distant relations from a dozen extended touch hopping families. City agencies began spending big money on Drew Street to fight what city planners had helped create. Crews trim trees on Drew Street once a year, instead of every five. This was in order to give LAPD sidelines up the hill, where the gang riddled apartments were crammed side by side. Police officers drove on Drew Street two cars at a time. Numerous LAPD gang unit operations seemed to fail. In the 90s, Drew Street was said to be one of the most dangerous streets in Los Angeles. On September 17, 1995 at around 2 a.m. in Cypress Park, Timothy was driving home from a barbecue with his brother David, his girlfriend Robin, and her three children Christopher, Stephanie, and Joseph. Unfamiliar with the neighborhood and not noticing a dead end sign, Timothy mistakenly turned onto Isabel Street, which was a dark narrow alley of single family stucco houses. After he had driven a short distance, he drove past a graffiti warning in Spanish that said Street of Killers. As Timothy tried turning around to leave the alley, 20 gang members surrounded his car and blocked away with garbage cans and other objects. 
As Timothy desperately tried to drive through the barricade, gang members opened fire, piercing the car's metal and shattering its windows. One bullet struck Stephanie in the head as she lay in her mother's arms. Her brother Joseph was hit in the left foot. A bullet grazed Tiffany in the back. Stephanie died as a result of the shooting. Several days after the incident, former U.S. President Bill Clinton condemned the murder and said the U.S. federal government would give money to anti-gang efforts. On August 1st, 1997, Anthony Rodriguez, Manuel Rosales, and Hugo Gomez, who were all from the avenues, were sentenced to 54 years and they must have liked him to stay prison. During the sentencing, Anthony's grandmother defended him and said that people outside the court speculated that Timothy traveled through the neighborhood to buy recreational drugs and was shot at over a drug debt. Robin, the mother of Stephanie, said her family was trying to find a shortcut home and said that Anthony's grandmother's statement was untrue. The avenues are also well known for their hatred and hate crimes committed against black American civilians in their community. In the year 2000, the black population in Highland Park was 2.4%. Starting in the late 90s to the early thousands, the 43rd Click of the Avenues led a campaign to drive black residents out of their neighborhood. On April 18th, 1999 at around 3.30 a.m., Kenneth was looking for a parking spot after a long night at the bar. As Kenneth found a spot on Avenue 52, Sixth Avenue gang members were riding around in a stolen van looking for enemies. They then spotted Kenneth as they made their way down Avenue 52. They watched as Kenneth made a U-turn and slowed down to park. The driver of the van then said to his friends, Hey, wanna kill a nick? Little else was said except, fuck it. At that moment, three Avenue members jumped out and ran up to Kenneth's car. All three men opened fire, blowing out the car's back and side windows and one of his tires. A single bullet entered the back of Kenneth's neck. He died at the scene. About a year and a half later, in October 2000, Christopher Bowser was waiting at a bus stop on Figueroa Street when two Avenue members walked up, beat him down, and stole his gold chain. The police were called, but he refused to press charges because he feared retaliation. Christopher moved to Highland Park in 1989 with his mother to escape the violent black gangs in South Central. His mother said the Hoovers were trying to put him on, and they beat him up when he refused. This wasn't Christopher's first run-in with the Avenues. Him and his friend from high school, who was also black, will be regularly chased down the street, thrown bottles at, and been shot at. A month after the attack at the bus stop, Christopher filed a complaint when an Avenue member drove by his house and pointed a gun at him. Eight days later, Christopher was shot three times at the same bus stop on Figueroa Street. He died at the scene. He was the father of four children. Around the same time on November 3rd, 2000, at around 2 a.m., Anthony was sleeping in a basement that he rented in Highland Park near York Avenue. Two Avenue members then broke into his place in the middle of the night and shot him twice. They used a pillow to muffle the sound, but the gunshots woke the landlord sleeping upstairs. He called the police, but the gunman escaped before squad cars could pull up. It was later found out that the Avenues got Anthony's location because they were acquainted with the roofers that were working next door. Anthony and the Avenues had no prior contact before the shooting. He was known as a popular student and a music producer. In 2004, Avenue gang members Gilbert Saldana, Merced Carrero, Alejandro Martinez, and Fernando Caseros were indicted on federal weapons and civil rights charges, which included the murders of three black men in Highland Park. The 12 jurors also heard from black residents of Highland Park who said they had been harassed and attacked by the Avenues. These allegations included shooting a 15-year-old boy riding a bike, pistol whipping a jogger, knocking a woman off a bike, being a man with a metal club and drawing chalk outlines of human bodies in a family's driveway. Other black residents were repeatedly told to move out of Highland Park and were called racial slurs. They were all convicted and sentenced to life in prison. On February 21st, 2008, Marcos, who was from a rival gang, was walking with his two-year-old granddaughter near Aragon and Roseview Avenue. A white Nissan sedan then drove by and four Drew Street members opened fire. Marcos died from the shooting. His granddaughter was not hit and did not suffer any major injuries. Minutes after the attack, officers from the Northeast Division pulled over the white Nissan near the intersection of Drew Street and Astaire Avenue. Three men got out the Nissan and began shooting. One of the men was Maria Leon's son, Daniel, who was armed with an AK-47. The officers fired back, fatally wounding Daniel and injuring another man. On June 26, 2008, Hundreds of police officers and federal agents swept through Glassell Park. 
raiding homes, and serving search warrants on members of the Drew Street clique. 70 were arrested during this raid, and 35 firearms were seized. While in custody, Francisco began cooperating with investigators. In return, his mother told him she hated him. His sisters and uncles stopped taking his collect calls, and his brothers were asked to kill him. In testimony over two weeks at the LA County Superior Court, Francisco offered a first-hand account of life in the avenues and spilled all of the gang's secrets. He testified that on one Sunday in October of 06, he was at church with his wife and daughter when his cell phone rang. He was summoned to a park near his house on Drew Street to murder a man he didn't even know. The Mexican Mafia wanted a Parole Avenue member named Frank dead. Francisco then left church with his family and called another gang member named Carlos. At the park that afternoon, they figured out who Frank was, but saw he was among children. Outside the park, Francisco called and told the Mafia representatives. They told Francisco to shoot Frank anyways. Francisco and Carlos returned and saw Frank walking away from the kids. We said, there he goes, let's roll, Francisco testified. Francisco said he then fired in the air to scare onlookers and Carlos walked across the park and shot Frank. Back on Drew Street minutes later, Francisco changed his sweatshirt, met his wife and daughter, and went about his Sunday. Francisco testified that his main responsibility was collecting taxes for the Mexican Mafia from about 40 drug dealers in the 12 square block neighborhood surrounding Drew Street. He made a total of $200,000 in nine months as a gang leader. He said he gave the money to Mafia associates every Thursday. He also was involved in immigrant smuggling. He never carried a gun, even in rival gang territory, because any gang member would be crazy to shoot a Mafia collector. Francisco also named attorneys, whom he alleged, provided him with home addresses of witnesses so that he and others could threaten them. Francisco was given 10 years for his cooperation and was released in 2018 with the green light on his head. In February 2009, Maria Leon's satellite home, which is located on 3304 Drew Street, was demolished. It was replaced with a community garden. The Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety issued orders against numerous code violations at the house. And city inspectors noticed that someone had tried to get underneath the home's floor. Rumors swirled that $80,000 in cash was buried there. In the early morning hours of September 2009, 1,500 police officers and federal agents rained down on the Glassell Park neighborhood in a massive crackdown on the avenues. 78 alleged avenue members were arrested in the gang sweep. In July of 2017, U.S. Postal Service suspended mail delivery to Drew Street after the carrier was nearly struck by bullets. For a period of time, residents in the 33 and 3400 block of Drew Street had to travel about a mile to pick up their mail. In current time, the avenues are still around, but Highland Park looks a lot different due to gentrification. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.